Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, June 11, 2020, and this is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending this week. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here, and I'm humbled by your presence. Okay, what are we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. That's probably the elephant in the room. Your questions on trading. If you don't mind, hang on to your questions, unless they're related to the slides, just so my ADD doesn't kick in until we get to the actual live charts. And I don't have a tremendous amount to cover this week. I want to focus mostly on the market. So we'll have plenty of enough time for that. Speaking of fills, hang on. Your favorite stock picks, if you don't mind, wait until we get to the live charts on that. And I want to follow up on volatility a little bit. And I think it's pretty important, especially given today's action so far. And speaking of today's action, stock sliding is it the end of the world or a buying opportunity? It's amazing how many people have already kind of already freaked out about this. And one thing I want to show you is that I found the key to the market, but there is a catch. And that'll make a lot of sense in a few minutes. As you know, you could lose money trading. And I am exhibit A today. <laughs> Laugh to keep from crying. All predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can be can happen between now and then. And a lot of stuff is happening between now and then today, obviously. On my website, boy, I tell you, this is a mother of all jinx. I woke up this morning thinking I need to change that bear market 2020 update to bull market 2020 update. And then, of course, come in and the futures are down 90 points. Interesting. But if you do click on that link, you'll get the latest commentary. Right now, it's it's defaulted to the latest commentary. And you can kind of go back and see how we played this bear market on the way down. And I think it's I think it's a great exercise, if I say so myself. Now, as we've been talking about for weeks, the volatility has continued to drop. And if we take a look at the S&P 500 and we look at the short-term volatility, and then we look at the longer term volatility. Now, what I normally pay attention to is the 50 day historical volatility. And it gives you an idea about where a market should be, all things constant, which obviously doesn't happen. And volatility stays, stays the same, which obviously changes. And markets follow a normal distribution, which they don't. But according to all that stuff, there's a two thirds chance that the market will be 30% higher or 30% lower a year from now. All that doesn't give you a lot of predictive value because there's a lot of ifs in the aforementioned paragraph, but it, would, but it does give you a feel for how volatile a market is. And usually the S&P runs about like eh, 10 or so percent. And the 70 readings that we saw a while back were just absolutely extreme. Now, it took a while for the 50-day volatility to catch up to the market, to the lower volatility we're seeing now. And what I showed in prior weeks, and go in and watch them if you can't sleep at night, but I showed how that shorter-term volatility began to implode long before the longer-term volatility began to implode. And that's because of the drop-off effect. So you need to pay attention to the longer-term volatility, but also maybe look at the shorter-term volatility now and then just to see where we are in the cycle. Now, one other thing real quick without going down the volatility rabbit hole, as we talked about before, it can help to tell you when the market is nearing a bottom. And I guess nearing is the key word in that sentence because you could be off by a little bit or even a lot. Let's say the volatility just absolutely expands and then begins to implode a little bit. And you think, well, that's it. And then the market goes on to make new lows once again. And I've showed that in prior presentations. So go ahead and check that out. But it is good to know where you are in the cycle. Now let's take a look at the VIX real quick. And one thing that's interesting about the VIX, oops. One thing about the VIX is a lot of people get it wrong. And a lot of people who should know better get it wrong. And I would never call anybody out but I just would like to point out that volatility, the VIX, I should say, is a measurement of volatility. So I see a lot of people use classical technical analysis in the VIX, and you're really not measuring the emotions of the market per se, as opposed to like an individual stock. You're measuring the volatility, and volatility tends to be more of a reversion to the mean 
type of market. It tends to behave a little bit better like that. So if you're going to use technicals, you want to look for when that VIX is stretched away, and that is a temporary bottom, okay? And then you want to look at when it's stretched away to the downside, and that is a temporary top, like right here, where you can see starting to pull away from that moving average. And I did a lot of VIX research in the late 90s because I used to work with Larry Connor and he was all into the VIX. And I took a lot of his research and and, and ran with it. But I, I don't do a whole lot with the VIX anymore. I find that the VIX really only matters when it matters. But when it starts going up, shooting up towards 80 or so, that's when it's time to pay attention. So VIX is relatively low compared to where it was, but still relatively high from a longer term perspective. And VIX measures the at the money put and call options, the implied volatility of those options. So the higher the VIX, the more freaked out everybody is about the market as a general statement, even though it's measuring puts and calls, that implied volatility shoots up and that might have something to do with put call parity. And when people get fairly complacent like they were as you can see, way back at the beginning of the year when the VIX is way down here, then it's the market becomes a little bit dangerous. But it can stay low for a long, long time. And that's the thing about trying to time with volatility. Now, when you do see an extreme peak like this, you know that the market is probably nearing at least a short-term low in here. So VIX is a good measurement of volatility based on, I guess it would be kind of a sentiment type of measurement. All right, so I woke up this morning thinking, you know, this market's due to correct and we could see an expansion of volatility soon. And then I walk in my office and see the futures are down 80 points. I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> I guess I don't need that slide anymore. But it looks like that's part of what's beginning to unfold here. Let's take a look at the TFM 10% system. And again, another slide I created before this morning's action. So we could actually have a buy on Friday unless the SHTF, which it's happening a little bit today. Now, this is the 50 week moving average. And obviously this is the weekly S&P 500. And this is the 10% what I call the buy line. My theory is if a market's gonna drop 30% or 40% or 50%, it's gonna drop 10% first. So when it drops 10% and it goes below the 50 week moving average, then you need to sell. And that sell signal is up around 2,900 and change. And if you've been following along, when that happened in March, it kind of, uh, I would say it freaked me out, but it's like, holy moly, it was actually February. I was like, wow, this thing, this market's in a lot of trouble for us to get a weekly signal before the even daily signals begin to kick in. Now, one thing I've learned or maybe relearned through this process, and I've only published a system a couple of years ago, is that it doesn't really do well when you have like a V-shaped recovery like we just had. If you have a, a bear market like in 2002, 2003, where the bear market bottomed out for a couple of years, it works pretty well because it catches up with price. But in a case like this, you can see the green line stayed stuck at 3042, way up those high levels. And obviously, the market dropped about 800 points below those levels. Now, the buy line or the 10% line means that we're, we're within 10% of the 52 week closing high. I'm sorry, 50 week closing high. And notice that after we did get that sell signal, there was Landry light to the downside for a few weeks, meaning that the highs are less than the moving average. And then once again, we're less than 10% away, even with today's action away from the 52 week closing high. And as of yesterday, we were about five and a half percent away from all time highs in the market, which is absolutely amazing when you think about where we were just a few weeks ago. And, and as I've been telling my peeps every night in the trading service, when we look at the NASDAQ and see it just banging out these new all time highs, if you'd have told me a month or two ago, NASDAQ be at new highs, I would not have believed you. But you have to believe in what you see and not in what you believe. Now you can see on a weekly chart, the, the system requires two weeks of daylight. And I think I tested it on a calendar basis. If Metastock 
shows their data on a calendar basis. Uh, Telechart, I know, shows their data on a on a week over week basis. So if you're looking at Telechart today, that bar would be a week going back to last Thursday. A calendar basis would be Friday to Friday. But either way, I think it's negligible because it's such a longer term system. But you can see we have two weeks of Landry light. So unless the SHTF either continuing today or tomorrow, then we'll actually have a buy signal going into the weekend. And I know it's kind of crazy to think, wow, buy this thing going into the weekend. Well, I don't recommend you time directly off of this, but it just gives you an idea of what's going on with the overall market. And it gives you an objective way of looking at things. So if you were a bearish up until now, and I guess now you're vindicated at least for one day, but if you're bearish up until now, and then all of a sudden you see this major weekly signal triggering, you need to rethink you're being bearish. Well, obviously with the market rallying about 30% from its lows, you probably should have rethunk your being bearish a while back. I had a friend of a friend stop by the other day and he was checking out my office and he said that he was still long the SPXS and he's been long for a long, long time. Well, that'll work until it don't, and especially with those leverage shares and inverse shares, there's a, a natural decay in those, but let's not get off on that tangent so I can stay focused. But we have Landry Light, it'll be week one, week two of Landry Light, meaning the lows of the weekly S&P 500 or greater than the 50 week moving average. So it'll be interesting to see how things shake out tomorrow, see if we get a buy signal on a down day. And that's happened quite a bit in the past. Here's the ubiquitous 50 day moving average versus the 200 day moving average. We talked about this last week, you had the death cross and then you had a bunch of trading in between the 200 and the 50, which usually the market's trying to just find its way when that happens. And if you notice, that was where the range developed right between the 50 and 200 day moving average. This green line I have in here would be the buy line based on the TFM 10% system. And I don't really believe in drawing lines in the sand when it comes to markets other than protective stops to get out when I'm in trouble. But I think it helps to have something like the 10% buy line, which ironically or interestingly is pretty close to the 200 day moving average. So again, not a big fan of lines in the sand, but if you do have some reference points, I think you can kind of take a, a Tarzan speak good as long as we stay above the 200 day moving average and as long as we stay above the 10% buy line. So I guess one thing that I didn't think about is obviously if we implode over the next day and get below, let's go back one chart. So I was thinking more along the lines of getting rid of the Landry light. Well, you would have to drop fairly low too. You would be down here right around the moving average anyway, if you did, you drop down. So we, if we drop below 3042, okay, then all bets are off. Let's get Tarzan back as far as the TFM 10% system. So first, this is the first test of the market. I wouldn't get too excited just yet. Obviously, honor your stops. Obviously, it sucks if you're long as you should be, but you know it happens, spelled with a silent SH. And sometimes these moves can do a really good job of shaking people out or shaking the weak hands out, so to speak. And if you take a look at your moving averages, you can see that the 50-day moving average has an upward slope as does a 200 day moving average. Now, as I often preach, you wanna believe in what you see and not in what you believe. And a lot of people have been coming up with these big picture prognostications and we'll get to that in one second. And the market has today, notwithstanding, gone up in spite of all that. Now, last week we talked a little bit about when the bear market becomes a bull market, what often happens is the laggards become leaders and leaders become laggards. If you think about it from an institutional standpoint, institutions tend to take profits in the momentum type of stocks, and then they tend to scoop up those stocks at lower levels. 
and that causes a big fat sector rotation. And we'll get the live charts. I'm going to walk through that to see where we are. And I think it'll be kind of a fun little experiment. I know I'm such a nerd. So here's Jets, and you could see that it's had a pretty good rally from lows, about 80%. And now it's pulled back. It actually looks pretty good, kind of cup and handily looking, bow tie and some other things, a first thrust type of pattern setting up here. And what I'm wondering is, can we have our cake and eat it too? Up until at least today, Thursday, June 11th, 2020, the momentum stocks have really been hanging in there. And the laggards have really been rallying from their lows. REITs, energy stocks, airlines again, and a lot of other of these stocks that have been left for dead. So if you take a look at Chewy, which we are long, notice that so far, so good, knock on wood, and it's just off of all time high. So this was a prior leader, obviously continuing to do well. And I would urge you to take a look at the archives of my recommendations and you'll see everything warts and all. And a little discretion really helps tremendously. So I wouldn't look at everything on a complete mechanical basis. Take a look at how they would work a little discretion such as a near miss on a profit target, a nick on a protective stop and an opening gap reversal on a damage control type of situation. Those are three of the biggie. So anyway, this was the Chewy stock, and you can see it was recommended back on 511 at 42, and then knock on wood so far, so good. Now, by the way, I get this question anytime there's earnings coming out or every other day. It's like, is there, do you hold through earnings? And my answer to that is yes. If you want to make money longer term, you have to stick with your positions longer term, which means there's going to be some earnings along the way and then sometimes i'll show a chart where we stayed with a position for a long long time many many months and i'll show that they were many earning periods during that time and sometimes it just flat out sucks when you get knocked out but chewy had earnings i believe it was yesterday and you could see or day before yesterday that so far it survived those earnings and then hopefully and i know i just said hope Three months from now, I'll be drawing this little arrow on the chart. And I think if you're going to make big money longer term in the markets, you have to be willing to hold through earnings and you have to be willing to, obviously, you know, my theory is you take the short term swing trade profits, which keeps you in the game. You get your stop to break even and then you trail that stop. And then hopefully, and I know I just said hope, but hopefully stay with the stock for a long, long time. So again, review the archives and all these trades will be there, except for something that might be like really, really new. Another one of those leaders is Zoom, although it did take a pause for a while. And if you go back a few weeks in the show, in the week of charge, you'll see I was like, well, this thing looks like it's topped out, stick a fork in, it looks like it may be done. But then it went on to make new highs. And as I told one of my clients, I'm not gonna rush out and short it until I get a bow tie or a first thrush or some sort of setup but it looks like it's cooking, like it's getting ready to roll over. But then it just defied gravity and went on and made new highs. So, so far, in a lot of cases, these, these old leaders are still leading. And you could see that Zoom was just making new highs earlier today. So it makes me wonder, can we have our cake and eat it too? Now, last week, just as kind of a fun experiment, I was looking at the lower price stocks in the Landry list or the stocks that were making transitions from lows because we were in this market and uh, hopefully, and there's that word again, but hopefully still are where things are beginning to rally from the lows. And there'll be some tremendous opportunities at those lower levels. As I've said before, John Lewis from Dorsey Wright gave a really good speech last I want to say October at the TSAA SF conference. And he talked about the fact that value stocks, and I'm going to define value as stocks that have been beat up, airlines, energies, and stocks like that, leisure, REITs, 
become momentum stocks and momentum stocks begin to roll over. So, so far, knock on wood, we might be able to have our cake and eat it too. So just as a little experiment, I thought it'd be fun to go in and see what would happen if you bought one cent above the high on all the Landry List stocks, did not use any money management, okay? And you made an investment, I'm making little air quotes, of $10,000 in these either lower priced or transitional type of setups, and you exited it on the close. And obviously that big one day when I first decided to look at this turned out to be a pretty good day. And the reason I call it Acres of Diamonds is that last week when I talked about this, I mentioned that I was doing some intraday trend following type of research and looking at big efficient areas like ETFs and all. And the whole time, my little inefficient lower price stocks and some of the transitional stocks were just rallying like crazy. And I didn't even realize that these stocks were taking off. And Acres of Diamonds is based on the story, to be the Reader's Digest real quick. Some guy decided he wanted to get diamonds because diamonds are worth a lot of money, right? So he sold all his property, searched the world for diamonds, ended up broke. And the guy who bought his property saw something shiny in the creek and turns out to be the biggest diamond find in history. Now, I don't know the details of this. I did order this book last week and I haven't gotten around to reading it. I'm not even sure if it's even come in yet. Anyway, I do have a fetish where I order a, a boatload of books and then someday read them. Anyway, as far as looking in your backyard, I was once again kind of chasing this intraday stuff. And then this lower price stock following that little system, buy one cent above the prior high and then exit on the close would have done incredibly well. And I would have made a lot more money than the money I lost chasing those efficient stocks intraday and it reminds me of and i told a, a friend of mine this too because he's been guilty of it before too but it reminds me of the dog with the bone looking in the water and he sees a bigger bone in the water in the reflection because it's magnified back and he drops his bone to go after that bone so anyway and following the little and i call it the s and g system because we don't want to rush out and, and trade something like this but it's kind of interesting that it's really working now and i feel like i found the key to the markets unfortunately borrowing a line from linda rasky when you think you find a key to the markets or you actually find a key to the markets they change a lot so it's kind of interesting if you go in and look at the spreadsheet and i just did screen captures going back those days. And I might need to check my math on some of these, but I think it's pretty close to being right and should be right. Oops. But you can see that just grabbing these low price stocks and then I kind of changed it to more low price issues as opposed to the higher price transitions. And here's the deal too. One thing I was thinking about is even if you did buy $10,000 worth of a higher price stock, your share size would be so small that the the change over here would be neg negligible. But you can see that these numbers, which look pretty good, have begun uh, to shrink a little bit. So I wouldn't I wouldn't call it down and out just yet, but it's like one has to wonder if the gig is up. I mean, I would take this any day if there was a way to know whether or not that would continue. But anyway, I just thought that'd be fun to show. And this is something that if you're in the Facebook group, we've been following up with it there and i think it's worth uh, checking out if i say so myself and we could take a look at some of these stocks when uh, we get to the live charts a couple of random thoughts it's kind of interesting first ugly open and it's i told you so and it's the end of the world well it might be but they've been telling us so for a long long time and it was four weeks or six weeks ago or whenever Somebody's like, Dave, you seem kind of bullish now. You were bearish. I was like, well, I'm seeing, not seeing any new shorts setting up, and I'm seeing long side setups, so maybe we need to start buying some of these stocks. And you can go in again and look at the archives to see what I was thinking back then. So it's not the end of the world just yet, okay, nor can you see it from here. But do pay attention to some of those aforementioned levels. I wouldn't necessarily rush out and sell if we drop below them. But it would be an area where you want to be a little bit more cautious. And by the way, you want to be cautious anyway, 
You want to be prudent. You want to use stops. You want to wait for entries. I'm amazed that I woke up thinking about that this morning too. It's funny, the things I wake up thinking about have changed. <laughs> but I woke up thinking about how many stocks which turned into huge stinkers, which I thought would turn into huge winners, never even triggered an entry. So make sure you wait for entries. And then of course, once you're blessed with an initial profit target, make sure you take those profits there and trail that stop higher longer time, longer term. See the money management module in the learning management system under the members area for a lot more on that. I feel pretty good that I, I have carpal tunnel in both hands pretty bad. I had one surgery not that long ago for cubital tunnel. I have cubital tunnel in my other elbow. So it's like I have all these these repetitive use injuries from all this banging on a keyboard all these years. And one thing that's good is that, it, I, that I'm no longer able to answer every single question in the world, but I'd be willing to bet that 99% of those questions could be answered by in the members area. And that's why I spent about a year or so just putting all the stuff in there. So a lot of answers there. And this, I might be able to answer your question, Elizabeth, on the fly. One thing about trading, if you've been trading for a while and you've gone through some ups and downs, you know that sometimes it could be kind of lonely. And the best thing that I've ever done was started the Facebook group where you can interact with other traders. You can ask for help if you need help. To my surprise, and I want to thank you guys for this, and I know I say this every week and I get a little sappy, but you guys have done a fantastic job of helping out the newbies and helping out those who are new to methodology and showing them where to find the information. So thank you for that. That's a uh, welcome to my life. You know, that's why I, I have all these repetitive use injuries. Not that I mind. It's just that it's 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 killing me in certain ways. But now that we have the, the members area, we can answer these questions. And then I haven't done a QA and a in a while, but I'm collecting questions for that. And that that fills in the gaps for a lot of the questions that are that are asked. And you can see the signs and signals. Sometimes I'll throw out some uh, trades in there. Specifically, I look at things, I'll see things like opening gap reversals and I'll throw those out. Obviously today didn't work so well because we had a gap and go type of situation in the S&P 500, which we'll look at in a few minutes. But I'll also occasionally throw out some IPOs. And you guys mentioned a lot of good stocks too, so keep it uh, keep it coming. So I really, um, really enjoy interacting with you guys. And you can go to this big, long URL if you want a, a plethora of information, or you can just go to davelander.com slash members. And I think the members, most of the members are here today live, so I appreciate you being here. And I think they'll tell you that it is worthwhile. Okay, let's shift gears for a second. Let's get to the live charts. You guys want to start asking about some individual stocks feel free to do so now and i'll get the charts set up now one thing i want to do before we get started is and i've done this last couple of weeks is i want to do the relative strength sort so if we take a look at the the major what i call the major mix the major industry groups drugs, semiconductors, foods, energies, etc. And let's just plot something like the spiders. Or let's do the S&P 500, that's fine. And if we take a look at let's take a look at like the breakout out and we can we can look at other areas too, but the breakout to now the market's up 376% and we hit okay. And we'll do a relative strength sort and anything above the S&P 500 has outperformed the S&P 500, and anything below the S&P 500 has underperformed the S&P 500, okay, over that period of time. And it's kind of interesting that some of these areas that were kind of left for dead, defense, banks, transports, hang on, <laughs> first good fill of the day. <laughs> And quite a few other areas have been doing well as of late. And some of the areas that were doing better than the overall market are now down here below the overall market, such as biotechnology, you can see, has lost some steam as of late. Now, I wouldn't count biotech out just yet, but it is losing a little steam in here because obviously it's shot higher and now beginning to roll over a little bit. But 
these relic strange sorts are kind of cool to do gold obviously was doing really well up until now and you can see that it's sort of rolled over in here and selling off fairly hard and we take a look at the bow ties not quite a bow tie to the downside yet but certainly kind of rounding over and rolling over so one thing i encourage you to do if you get really bored is occasionally do those relative strength sorts i used to do a lot of that type of analysis every day but because i do a lot of empirical research in other words look at a lot of charts i end up not doing as much relative strength sorts maybe once a week now s p 500 obviously gap and go kind of day let's take a look at the spider so we can see what actually happened i really thought we'd have a Opening gap reversal today, but as you can see, we had that little spill on the open and it really didn't get past that opening range by that much. It sort of faked me out a little bit. In hindsight, I was stupid for being faked out. You know, it happens, spelled a silent SH. And so far, we've had a run lower. This is what I call a gap and go situation. The big opportunities usually are the gap reversal situations where the market gaps up, gaps down, and then begins a rally. But in a case like this, sometimes the gap and go situation, you gap down and when you break out that opening range, a la Toby Crable, you can have a nice slide in here. And so far, so good as far as that slide is concerned if you're or a bear and playing that gap and go situation. Let's take a look at bonds while we're down here. Bonds had a big gap higher. It looks like they're trying to make an opening gap reversal. I think that was one of the fills you just heard where bonds yeah you can see beginning to break down in here and sometimes market gaps way higher and then begins to implode everything gets a little bit overdone so that's what's going on there let's take a look at gold too while we're at it gold has been losing some steam in here as you can see trading mostly sideways as of late pretty much flatsville for a little bit over two months in here so gold the commodity losing a little steam i wouldn't rush out and buy gold stocks right now although it does seem like the end of the world right and that would be the thing to do nasdaq composite getting whacked fairly hard today obviously down three percent not the end of the world but you know me I, I hate to see a market get right past its prior high and then get thwarted usually what i like is i like to see the market blast past those prior highs and then have some orderly corrections along the way but so far it's just one ugly day let's not get too excited just yet okay but of course stay prudent not in your stops just in case take a look at the russell 2000 down about so oh, almost six percent today so this is really an ugly day here and it's kind of funny i i guess you need to be cognizant of your thoughts and couple days ago i was telling people in the service and maybe even the market in a minute like hey this broke we've broken out nicely from this range and i got to thinking that i guess i need to stop saying that because we're so far away from that range but look at this with today's action we've come almost all the way back to that range so that's a little bit concerning again not the end of the world let's just see what tomorrow brings energy is getting whacked pretty hard in here nice little run higher getting whacked pretty hard so make sure you wait for entries on any new positions there. I saw a lot of transitional type of setups and energies last night, especially in these lower priced issues. And they look really, really good. Unfortunately, obviously getting whacked. Metals and mining overall kind of hanging in there today, notwithstanding. Today looks like a TKO. I'm always getting asked, hey, Dave, show me a TKO. And it's hard to find one on the fly, but that's what they look like. Notice that this range, this wide range bar is much bigger than all the smaller bars in here and that tends to knock out the weak hands it also attracts some eager shorts and if the market continues higher then it squeezes those people out we talked about gold silver kind of looks a little bit like gold the problem with this silver morningstar industry group is it kind of attracts a couple of really really big uh gold uh silver stocks i think it's like paas and wpm and maybe one or two others but you don't get a full view of all the sectors so go in sometimes and dig through the sector in here drugs kind of hanging in there today notwithstanding but obviously we lost some steam in here so we're going to have to start paying attention to the bow ties the bow ties turned down today so far because the close is below the moving averages and as i say often 
as I learned from Greg Morris, when the close gets below a moving average, it will turn down. When the close gets above a moving average, an exponential moving average, that is, it'll turn right back up. Obviously, the simple moving averages can sometimes take a while to turn back up. But that propensity, by the way, does work out nicely with the bow ties. And you can see biotech is now below that 30-day exponential and the 20-day exponential. So obviously, those moving averages have turned down slightly. Again, not the end of the world, but certainly a market where you want to honor your stops. Take a look at like health services. Health services did break out of their range, but today they're getting whacked, coming right back into their trading range. Defense stocks have been on a tear as of late today, notwithstanding, kind of knocking out in here more than a knockout. Let's take a look at like leisure stocks. Leisure stocks, in spite of everything going on, doing well today, notwithstanding. We knew we were going to get whacked. We just didn't know when and how bad. Retail overall, the overall sector still looks pretty good. In fact, it's just, I wouldn't even call that a TKO yet. I like to see TKO wise a much bigger shakeout type of move, but that still looks pretty darn good. That's one of the old leaders that might still be a new leader, at least for a while. It's hardware, or as I call it, Apple. Their software, which is doing pretty good, but did stall out at its prior high and here based on today's action. And then what else? Let's take a look at semis and wrap this up. You can see semis were just getting around to breaking out to brand new highs, and then they got thwarted too. So that's a little bit of a concern, but I wouldn't freak out just yet with the overall market, but do pay attention. If that Rusty gets back in the range, I'd be pretty concerned about that. If we drop below 10% away from the 50-week closing high on the S&P 500, and I think if memory serves, that's about 3,000, I would begin to get concerned. And obviously, you want to honor your stops on any existing longs. We get stopped out, we get stopped out. I know we'll drop an F-bomb or two. But then we can focus on getting short once again if we have to. But let's hope, and I know you should never use the word hope, let's hope we don't have to do that. Okay, um, let me shift gears here. Uh, if you guys have any individual issues or any stocks that you guys want to cover, I'll be happy to do that. And I want to get, uh, let me get logged into my members area and I'll show you a thing or two real quick because I'm getting some questions on that. So keep the stock picks coming. So let me just show you real quick, because I'm getting some questions on this, a couple of things. So I'm getting asked, so Elizabeth, you're here. You asked some telechart questions. If you come down to members resources and click here, this is davelander.com slash members, okay? And you come down to members resources, this is the back end of the website or, and you can see here's the telecharts scans there. Here's a short video on how to install the scans. And here's a sample spreadsheet for tracking purposes. And if you need anything else as a member, just ask me and I'll put it behind the firewall here for your access. Now, if you click on this right here, this just brings you back to the home page of the members area. Okay. And I'll probably need to put a home page for DaveLander.com up here. I thought that would be more confusing, but DaveLander.com is obviously just davelander.com, this is the, the front end. This is the public website. So the, the back end is the members area, which you click here for, and then davelander.com is just a public website and public commentary. All right, so let me get back to the charts. Keep asking questions about individual stocks. Elizabeth is mentioning EMQQ, EMQQ. And he says, EMQQ, though it's more of a fundamental pick for me, but can we use the same DL principles to stay on the right side of these trades too? Yeah, absolutely. I was actually, I, I probably need to take a break someday, but <laughs> I was at late last night, I was actually writing about how the trend is held hostage by price, or I should say fundamentals are held hostage by price. Yesterday I had an interview with Forbes for Forbes Italia, and they were asking me about if I use fundamentals, and my answer was no, because everything is reflected in price. And what I was writing last night, it's something that I've talked about quite a bit, is that everything works better with trend. So let's say you've got some kind of arcane 
system and it says the market is going down and the market happens to be going down and trending lower, then you're going to think your arcane system is fantastic. Unfortunately, when the market turns or the trend turns, if that system doesn't also suggest that the market is going up, in other words, they're they're not congruent, then you're going to lose a lot of money with that system. There was a techno fundamental system years ago that really worked well. It was one of the first things that I learned about when I started reading about markets and I actually applied some of those theories and it made a lot of sense because fundamentals make a lot of sense, right? You want to buy good companies, right? And then technicals make a lot of sense. You want to buy stocks that are going up. Well, if you think about it, if you just take out that fun, if you take out the fundamentals, then if you have a trend, then you should be trading the trend. And one other example I wrote about was that I've seen people who are really into these arcane methodologies, but they have a trend filter. So if the trend filter says down and their methodology says up, they ignore their methodology, okay? Well, if you think about it, it sounds like they're just trading their trend filter, and hopefully that made sense. Now, fundamental reason, uh, I don't know what the fundamental reasons would be, emerging markets, internet, and e-commerce, ETF, I see, what, okay. Uh, you've broken out nicely past the prior highs. Remember earlier I said I like the market to bust out past the prior highs and not look back? But yeah, on a pullback, if you have reasons to buy this, then I think it might be worth a shot. I think there's more inefficient markets you could be going after right now. Some of the stuff in the service, hopefully, will take off nicely. This stock will likely not double anytime soon. Uh, major e ETFs usually don't rush out and double that quickly. But if you pick a, a very inefficient stock and it's trending really nicely and set up nicely, or in more recent times, maybe bottoming out nicely and forming a bow tie, then it might be worth a shot, okay? And it might be able to go on to double or triple. All right, Dave, not sure if this is one of yours. Thanks for mentioning that. Missed. No, this would not be one of mine because it's got a big fat gap down here, okay? So the chart is broken. And anyone who gets in this stock might be looking to get out of break even or look to mitigate their losses. So usually when a stock has a big old gap, I ignore it. You know, lately I've been talking, especially in my stock charts show about the phone traders. And phone traders are just people that use their phone and they're in and out of stocks and they're using like the little phone trading app or whatever. And they might see something like this and think it looks fantastic, but they don't have the bigger picture in mind. They don't look at the bigger picture chart to see that this stock has a lot of problems in the past. So no, yeah, that's, I would pass on that. I, I hear you, I see what you're looking at, but it's got some trouble. HXL, deep pullback. That's gonna be a defense stock. Yeah, that looks good, okay? That looks fantastic. Um, this was one, I think, on my Landry list. The only thing, it does have some overhead supply at 75. But hey, if it got up to 75, I think I'd be happy. Uh, I think I'll give you a high five on that one because you've got a bow tie, as you can see. You've got a pullback. You've got a cup and handle, which is pretty nice, okay? So yeah, absolutely. That's a good-looking stock, and that is on my Landry list. Good job, George. C-E-N-X, T-K-O. Uh, yeah, at first glance, that is a TKO. Um, you know, you're kind of bumping up against these prior highs in here. And then if you go back further on the chart, and again, this is a good testament for the phone traders. They're looking over here thinking everything looks rosy, and they don't know that they're getting ready to hit a mound of overhead supply. Now, keep in mind, on a lot of these things, maybe you could squeeze off a swing trade, but the real money is in the longer term trading. And I think if you're trying to hold, overnight for several days, you will occasionally get whacked. And that's one story I told, uh, I think yesterday at the stock chart show, you know, somebody has never gotten whacked in the market and they made 30 or 40% the first month. And it tends to give them a permanent income hypothesis. And my whole, my whole point there over the past couple of weeks has been, you don't know what you don't know. And believe me, I continue to get my ass handed to me. And there's a lot of lessons that I have to learn and relearn. So I'm not the grand poobah or anything. But I do know a few things, because I've seen a thing or two, like the farmer's dude, right? 
And anyway, you've got overhead supply to deal with here. So I would leave that alone. There's there's other stocks out there, like the last one you just asked about, for instance, let's see if the chart remembers it. What was it? Yeah, uh, HXL. This stock can almost double before it hits any trouble. Hey, I like that, double before trouble. Oh, you're welcome, George. Car? This is one that I did kind of like. Let's take a look at it. Now, yesterday it didn't look as good, but now it's looking pretty good. This is, I actually had a, I might have confused the issue with facts on this stock because this did set up as an early IPO pattern, okay? But yeah, I mean, James, I forget, are you on the service? We have so many people on the, that are members and, and quite a few that aren't on the service. But yeah, this this could easily fi find its way to tonight's trading service. So I'm gonna have to give you a high five on that one. Yeah, it looks really, really good. Nice little opening gap reversal there. Well, I wish I'd have seen this one. I think my gap scan was set too big this morning, but yeah, that would have that would have made my day or mitigated some of the losses for sure. Uh, you got plenty of volume. It's an IPO. I mean, it's a, you know, they make air conditionings, which is not that exciting. And that's one of my problems or with IPO sometimes is, I, I, if I'm going to go after an IPO, ideally, I want the market to be fairly exciting. And I just was having a hard time getting excited about air conditioning. So what I'll do is I just won't take that first signal, okay? And then I'll come in and take a secondary signal like a pullback like this. So let's take a look at like, let me show you an example. If you go back and look at last week's Dave Landers, the week in charts, you'll see that with GAN, I took this first signal back here, it failed miserably, but then I went back in here, okay, on a secondary signal, or it might have been here. I have to check the charts. Let's see. Let's put a five day moving average in there and see where it was. Okay, I did get long on this day here, okay, and took some partial profits up here and probably get stopped out on the rest. Well, better than the poke in the eyes, what I say. Who am I kidding? I dropped an F bomb. All right, any more? Quite bunch today for the most part. All right, Lulu, Lulu Lemon. Yeah, it looks good, but it's not set up yet. Okay, you've had this really good run in here, and now it's beginning to pull back. Now, like we just, I don't want to talk on both sides of my mouth, but remember a few minutes ago and last week or so, we talked about the fact that sometimes leaders become laggards and laggards become leaders. I would be more excited about stocks, retail stocks that are in uh, at lower levels, okay? So this looks okay, but on a pullback, maybe uh, something like, well, it's no longer set up, but this was this was a, a, a low level retail stock. You could see kind of volatile, obviously extremely volatile now, but this was one that was on my radar. I did not catch it, but it, it went up about 100% in two days, which was kind of cool. So not necessarily this one, but something along these lines. Macy's is one that just took off if you're going after retail. I guess Lululemon is retail. But you can see Macy's, nice thrust higher, nice little pullback. Also, initially came out of a cup and handle. If you go back and look at those slides a few slides ago, you'll see that we had it as one of the uh, low price setups. ZI for art. ZI. You have a name like a rock star, Art. <laughs> Are you a rock star? That's a cool name. Yeah, this is interesting, but it's uh, pretty wild and crazy. It's shot higher as an IPO, and then it came all the way back in a little bit. So sometimes you have what I call the first deep retracement, but this is too crazy even for me. But I hear you. Yeah, it's, it's shot higher, it came back in. I mean, make sure you wait for some sort of entry on this thing. FF for Stuart. Um, no, uh, and the reason is, notice that you, you broke out past all these peaks. That's a good thing, right? And then you drop back below them. So take that off your radar from now. RRC is going to be a energy stock. Now it has broken out of its range and come back to tag it. I would prefer if it didn't, if it hadn't come all the way back in to tag it. Um, it's still at fairly low levels. You do have some bad memories. I think I would pass. It came back in and tagged its range. I hear you there, Stu, uh, Craig. It looks okay, but it came in and tagged its prior range in here, and it's also below this overhead supply. 
So in the energies, there's plenty out there. There's a plethora of stocks out there. There should be quite a few on the Landry list today. So check those first. Argro. Uh, a lot of bad memories in this stock. I think it would pass based on that. You know, if you're looking at something that's at lower levels and bow ties, again, check the Landry list. I hear you. If you take a look at the if you take a look at the chart without looking at all this bad memories, it looks fantastic. Nice cup and handle bottom, nice little bow tie here. It looks fantastic. It looks like it easy like it could easily double from this pattern, but the problem is it just has a lot of bad memories to it. I know this trading is behind this big old trading here, so I don't worry as much about it, but I just don't like the wide and loose action you could probably i'm just gonna guess i don't know but if you went to the foods you could probably find something better if you find a stock you kind of like go look at everything else in the sector and see if there's anything that looks a little bit better i mean this one looks a tiny bit better because it's kind of broken out but it did pull back to its breakout at least the overhead supply is a little further away there maybe not we won't find anything let's see Cousins came back in. Nope, maybe not. All right, BGS. Yeah, I mean, that's in a nice trend, but you've got a lot of bad memories back here. You know, always draw your horizontal line and look above it. If I die tomorrow, at least you have that. Yeah, this one looks pretty good. I mean, this is a good example of a low-level stock. I think this might be on a Landry list. But, you know, it could get pretty much double before it hits any trouble, which is fine with me, right? If, if I make 100% on a stock, I'm pretty happy. I'm not going to be upset if that's all I make. Believe me. NKLA, do I dare ask? Yeah, Dakota, that's kind of crazy, huh? Yeah, the phone traders went uh, absolutely nuts on this one. I I don't think I would touch it with a 10-foot pole. It's just too crazy. One of you guys were texting me saying that somebody was saying you could sell the 20 puts, and if it gets put to you, you get the stock for $9 a share it, when, it's, when they finally get around to making cars and, uh, you know. This this stock here tells me that speculation is alive and well, which is actually a good thing, okay? But it's just it's just way too crazy. I think you can get hurt really, really easily in something like this. And this looks like a stock that probably gets halted when it goes absolutely nuts. But boy, I tell you, it's it's a crazy one, huh? Yeah, let me know. Just uh, chime in the chat group and let us know in Facebook if you uh, if you're brave enough to go after that one. All right, any more? All right, cool. Well, while we're in impasse, I want to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything unanswered, you can shoot me an email, davelander.com slash contact. And if you're in the Facebook group, just bring it up there and we'll, we'll have a look. All right, thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you all hopefully again next week. Thank you so much.